Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday, as we hold in our hearts both sorrow for our suffering world and gratitude for the presence of God's spirit in the midst of it all. I am Pastor Elaine Hughes, so glad to be with the people of Redeemer Lutheran Church and others who may be joining us this morning, and especially glad to be welcoming Pastor Eric Mall back into the role of pastor of Redeemer Lutheran Church as his official day of return is tomorrow. An occasion we will celebrate this morning with Pastor Eric's reading of our gospel text. Let us be in the spirit of worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galilean? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visits, visitors from Rome, both Jewish born and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, you Judeans and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your youth shall, shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord, the great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 104, uh, verses 24 through 34. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. 
The second reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given them manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by this one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We were all made to drink one of one Spirit. The Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Eric, you're muted. Oh, sorry, I hit the button, but it didn't unmute. All right. The Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After that, he said, he said this and showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sorry, I hit the button, but I guess it didn't go off. It's Pentecost. Sunday of the church year when we hear the story from Acts about the Holy Spirit coming in wind and fire to make of Jesus discouraged, dispirited disciples, spirit-filled evangelists. Inspired, emboldened, and commissioned for the vocation of spreading the good news of God's love let loose in the world in the name of the crucified and risen Jesus. In ordinary times, churches would be decorated with red balloons and streamers. Church choirs would be singing festal anthems, organists would be letting out all the stops, and coffee hours would feature icing-rich cakes inscribed with the words, Happy Birthday, in celebration of the day designated in Christian tradition as the birthday of the church. This is how Pentecost is often celebrated in ordinary times. But as I hardly need to tell you, this is no ordinary time. And as much as I wish we could be together in worship, it's not possible. And as much as I wish I could be delivering a buoyant, beautiful, upbeat sermon, extolling the manifold gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's not possible. It's not possible. In part because I can't help but remember that in Hebrew, the word spirit, ruha, can also be translated as wind or breath. And with that reminder, I can't help but fix on that word, breath. And with it, the realization that over 102,000 people in the United States have died in the past three months as a result of a virus that makes breathing impossible. And with it, that videotape of George Floyd lying on the pavement in South Minneapolis with a white police officer's knee on his neck for eight minutes. George Floyd, after calling for his mother, who died two years ago, 
After pleading, please let my children know I love them, George Floyd saying over and over again, I can't breathe. And with it, a video on Facebook posted by Pastor Ingrid Rasmussen, who serves Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis and who yesterday morning simply took her iPad and walked around the neighborhood in which Trinity Lutheran Church lives and moves and has its being, the neighborhood that has suffered from decades and decades of racial injustice and economic deprivation, and which today bears the burn marks and the broken glass of pent up rage and dreams too long deferred. Pastor Ingrid Rasmussen, eight months pregnant, who took Facebook users on a tour of the neighborhood in which she lives and which she loves until at the end of her video, she just stood in front of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and wept. Unable to speak for the sorrow choking her heart and leaving her viewers like me unable to breathe for the sheer raw wound she exposed. The truth is juxtaposed with this lack of breath to the point of death. It's been difficult for me these past few days to figure out what to say about a text in which God's holy breath is filling disciples for the vocation of proclaiming God's love let loose in the world because I want to ask where exactly is that breath now? Where is the spirit of God moving in our world at this time? because really I'm having a very hard time sensing its presence. And I'm sorely in need of what Episcopal priest Barbara Brown Taylor calls a little divine CPR. All of which makes me very grateful that alongside our text from Acts with its dramatic narrative of the Holy Spirit coming in wind and fire to inspire the disciples, our gospel text is from the 20th chapter of John. The text we might call John's Pentecost narrative is it too tells the story of Jesus' disciples receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, not 50 days after the resurrection as Luke tells the story, but rather on the evening of Easter morning itself as the crucified and risen Jesus appears to his cowering disciples behind locked doors. John's telling of the story being more helpful in the travails of our time, it seems to me, for a number of reasons, among them these. It situates the narrative just three days after the terror of Jesus' crucifixion and acknowledges the fear and uncertainty in which the disciples find themselves. In John's telling of the story, the breath that Jesus breathed upon the disciples comes from the one whose hands and side bear the wounds of love, reminding us that the one who bears God's breath does so all the way to the most God-forsaken times and places imaginable. Unlike Luke's Pentecost story, in John's telling, that breath comes quietly, along with those beautiful words of belonging and commissioning, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And it speaks of the nature of spirit-filled discipleship, not so much in the sense of fiery and passionate oratory, which according to Luke brought 3,000 people to faith in one day, but it speaks of the vocation of spirit-filled discipleship in this way, as Jesus says to the disciples, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Words that always bothered me because they made it sound like Jesus was sending the disciples out with some sort of litmus test by which they were to determine who was to receive the gift of forgiveness and who was not. Words that always bothered me until I read a definition of forgiveness that goes like this. Forgiveness is the unexpected invitation into possibilities for the present and the future not dictated or bound by the past. If you have ever picked up the phone and heard on the other end of the line the voice of someone from, you have, who, from whom you have been estranged speak your name in tenderness and care, you will know what this means. Forgiveness 
is the unexpected invitation into possibilities for the present and the future, not dictated or bound by the past. It is a definition of forgiveness which led me to imagine that after Jesus extended the beautiful words of peace to his frightened disciples, after showing them his hands and side, after telling them that he would be sending them out into the world just as he had been sent into the world by his Father, after breathing upon them the gift of the Holy Spirit and speaking the words about forgiving and retaining sins, he shared with them by way of explanation of just what he meant by forgiving and retaining sins in my imagination he shared with them this little poem called Possibility. Possibility. The thing is, there are always possibilities beyond our imaginings. Like it's possible to make a rabbit out of a handkerchief and then to give that rabbit a voice and a way of poking his face out from behind a chair in a funny sort of way, like in an airport where everyone is waiting for a flight that's been delayed and the parents are frazzled and cranky and at their wits end and the children are wailing and beyond themselves with weariness. And in that moment, it's possible that someone could pull a handkerchief out from their pocket, a colorful one is best, and with a bit of flourish and drama so as to get the attention of all the children heaped upon their parents' laps and on the floor, that person could start telling a story about a rabbit, folding the handkerchief in all the right ways so as to make the rabbit then and there, making the moment itself so devoid of all hope, just a moment ago, a thing alive with ears and legs and jumps and joy, a glimpse of light and life no one was imagining possible just with a handkerchief and a little imagination and a determination not to let the devastations and the despair of the world have the last word the thing is it's possible and maybe the only hope we have left so let us arm ourselves with handkerchiefs and go out into the world with stories about rabbits let us defy any notion that all there is to see in the moment is what's visible to the eye. Let us make an opening in the darkness through which the other world can shine. Let us defy any notion that all there is to see in the moment is what's visible to the eye. Let us make an opening in the darkness through which the other world can shine. I'm sorry if in a time when the viruses of COVID-19 and racism, both of which infect our country and both of which make it very hard for some among us to breathe. I'm sorry if a poem about making rabbits from handkerchiefs in airports sounds frivolous or bogus, callous or ridiculous, but it's not really about making rabbits at all. Rather, it's about bearing witness to the possibility of an opening in the darkness through which the other world can shine. And I don't mean heaven or some pie in the sky future place yet to come, but I mean the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God here now on earth as it is in heaven possible, the kingdom where justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. The kingdom where when any one of us looks at anyone else, no matter the color of the other's skin, we don't see other at all, but rather brother or sister. The kingdom where we are invited into possibilities for the present and the future, not bound or dictated by the past, infected as that past has been by greed and hate and scapegoating and fear and prejudice and chokeholds of a thousand different kinds. In our gospel text for this morning, Jesus wasn't sending the spirit-filled disciples out with some litmus test by which they'd get to decide who could receive the gift of forgiveness and who couldn't. Rather, he was saying, guess what, you guys? You get to go out there and tell everyone you meet that neither the present nor the future need be bound or dictated by the events, the mistakes, the failures, the hatred, the scapegoating, or the fears of the past. You get to go out there and tell them that by the power of love, there are possibilities beyond our imaginings. This is your calling as disciples. And if you don't go out there, 
and invite people into possibilities for the present and the future that aren't bound or dictated by the past, then the past will continue to keep them bound. And the sins that have infected hearts and minds and souls and institutions and constitutions and halls of power for ever so long will still be retained. This is your calling as disciples. Jesus said to those upon whom he breathed the spirit of suffering love, it is your calling to defy any notion that all there is to see in the moment is what's visible to the eye. It is your calling to make an opening in the darkness through which the other world can shine, the other world known as the kingdom of God, where there are possibilities beyond our abilities to imagine and love with guts enough to be known as justice and breath enough for everyone for all of God's children and all of God's creatures in the world God so loves. This is our calling as disciples of Jesus as well, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. A calling not necessarily made manifest in fiery, windy oratory that brings 3,000 people to faith in one day but rather a calling that seeks to bring just a little bit of breath into every death-filled time and place, like in an airport where everyone is waiting for a flight that's been delayed and the parents are frazzled and cranky at, and at their wit's end and the children are wailing and beyond themselves with weariness. And where it's possible in that moment to take out of your pocket a handkerchief that could become a rabbit, a little breath, we might call the spirit of God. In keeping with the calling that seeks to bring just a little bit of breath into every death-filled time and place in whatever way possible. Just as Pastor Ingrid Rasmussen did the other morning, using her iPad and her tears to show us her beloved neighborhood. Just as people of every color are doing all over our country right now as candles are being lit and vigils are being held and pain is being shared and questions are being raised and rage is refusing to take a seat at the back of the bus. Just as neighbors are doing for neighbors in this time of COVID-19 as groceries are being delivered to kitchen stoops and meals are being shared and check-in calls are being made and real notes in real envelopes with real stamps are being delivered to real mailboxes. All of these gestures of carrying being unexpected invitations into possibilities for the present and the future not bound or dictated by the past. All of them handkerchiefs made into rabbits. All of them openings in the darkness through which the other world can shine. On this Pentecost Sunday, John's gospel calls us to arm ourselves with handkerchiefs so we can, in whatever way possible, bring the breath and spirit of God to every death laid in time and place. But if you, like me, are having trouble sensing that breath or spirit, if you, like me, are sorely in need of a little divine CPR, then I would invite you, along with me, to simply stand next to Pastor Ingrid Rasmussen outside Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis, and there, along with her and her neighborhood, just to weep. Just to weep. Because what we will notice as we weep together is that Jesus is weeping with us. And in the knowledge of that accompanying suffering love, we will in time sense something stirring, something like a breath. And we will breathe it in. The breath of a love with guts enough to be known as justice. The breath 
of a love with mercy enough to unbind us from the past. The breath of a love with possibility enough to lift our heads and quicken our hearts and strengthen our resolve and give us hope and move our feet out into the beautiful broken world God so loves in the name of Jesus. On this Pentecost Sunday, let us simply stand alongside Pastor Ingrid Rasmussen as she weeps for the neighborhood she loves. Let us simply stand alongside George Floyd and those who loved him and all those who, because of whatever virus or sorrow or injustice may afflict them, cannot breathe. Let us stand there because that is where this Pentecost morning asks us to stand. Alongside the crucified and risen Jesus in whose suffering love we find our breath. Amen. Amen. Now, with all Christians everywhere, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And let us take a moment to share that peace with one another around our kitchen tables or in our living rooms, and then gesture outward into the world to share that peace in the spirit of Jesus with, with all of God's creation. I would again remind you this morning um, to be generous in mailing in or going online to <clears throat> support um, Redeemer or the church that you are logging in from. Um, remembering that the church continues to be the, the church even in these times when um, the buildings are locked. We continue still to reach out to our neighbors and to those in the world who are suffering and to pay our employees. So please be generous. Um, help us continue being the church in this time when it is most important that we do so. And now we gather together in the spirit of prayer. On this day of Pentecost, we unite in prayer, asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the globe. For the Eastern Orthodox churches, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the Roman Catholic Church, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the Protestant and Anglican churches, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the Pentecostal churches, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. For the evangelicals and independents, we pray, come, come, Holy Spirit. For our own congregation, we pray, come, come Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. And for everyone who searches for you, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Restore with your breath the whole creation, especially the lands and waters laden with pollution and the animals whose habitats are threatened. Come. Holy Spirit. 
For your earth we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Send your spirit on the leaders of nations, on legislators, and on judges, that the people of the world will benefit from your justice and your peace. For the nations of the world, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, and all who face death. Send healing to those we name here before you, silently in our hearts or aloud. We pray, oh, Lord. we pray, oh Lord, this day for all those who mourn the death of George Floyd, for his family, for his neighborhood, for all those who cannot breathe for the suffering and sorrow they feel. Be with all those throughout the world, oh Lord, who cannot take a breath, who cannot get a breath. For the suffering they endure. Come, Holy Spirit. Restore to health those who have contracted the virus. Uphold healthcare workers, grant jobs to those who are unemployed, and assist researchers in discovering a vaccine. For all who are confronting the coronavirus, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Bless those who are graduating from schools and universities. Give our youth hope for their future. For our graduates, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Show our nation and our churches how to connect with those whose language we cannot speak. For the speakers of every language, under the sun, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us ways during this time to share with one another the faithfulness we receive from you. Surprise us with unexpected grace. For family members and friends, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear also the cries of our own hearts. For ourselves, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Receive our praise for all who for centuries have gone before us in the faith, from the first Pentecost throughout Christian history and up to this week that at the end we and all the saints will rejoice in your presence, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit Transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.